Greg Pike, biggest WWF slash E payday. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say this as a as a performer. Now I got six figures out of them for the Smoky Mountain Library, and I got five figures as my share of the OVW library, and I got other but as a as a talent, I'm ashamed to say fifteen thousand dollars for WrestleMania ten. <laughs> I'd heard all about the WrestleMania yeah. and the pay-per-view and these huge checks, right? And I managed the WWF champion twice, Yoko versus Luger and Yoko versus yeah. Bret Hart, on a sold-out Madison Square Garden, and I got 5000 more than I got for Starcade 86 when it was just the, down in little old Greensboro on closed circuit. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, for WWF, big payoffs. Uh, of course, they get them now. Greg Pike, biggest NWA slash WCW payday. Uh, Starcade '86 was ten grand. Starcade '87 was ten grand. Uh, those were the, the biggest ones. Um, I knew we were in trouble when WCW. So we were used to five grand for Starcade '85. Uh, when basically the big show of the year, that was our payoff. Like I said, '87 didn't deserve it. I think they just were ashamed that they set us up on that scaffold for nothing. But when WCW took over and all of a sudden the pay-per-views got full coverage, all the cable systems, instead of just these closed-circuit starcades, fuck, the biggest fucking check we got for a WCW pay-per-view was $3,000. We knew then we were in trouble. Of course, we were on guaranteed money and they were making none. Because, But see, I looked at it like it wasn't our fucking fault the company ain't making any money because it's not the fault of the wrestlers who were drawing sellouts in Richmond or wherever three months but two months before they bought the company was the fault of the people running it because in in the book it is detailed i won't even mention the book or where to get it we went from doing record houses in some places in september of 1988 they bought the company in october of 1988 by february of 1989 greensboro was down to fucking twelve thousand dollar gates mm. it was it just fell apart part of it was tully and arn that took the took the emotion took the took kind of the foundation to break up the horsemen took the foundation out of the NWA, but they they hired people that had no fucking clue. They booked buildings on the wrong nights. They they made the television show look like a fucking game show. The ding dongs, all the other things. It just it was an uphill uphill battle. I actually have two questions for you. If you can't answer both, that's perfectly fine. The first one I'd like to say is that we all know John Cena is the main guy in WWE. Who in ROH do you think could be the next John Cena and why? And I guess the other question would be is that who in WWE do you feel is not getting the deserving push that they should and why? Okay, um, well first of all I would never say somebody else is going to be the next John Cena. I know what he's asking, who's going to be the next big star? Uh, because uh, to me, everybody ought to be individuals. The reason why wrestlers don't get over better than they, they do now these days is because they got writers putting words in their mouth. They can't get themselves over. Uh, I think Tyler Black is, is, is a superstar waiting to happen, but he's too young right now. Uh, he needs more seasoning. He needs more time. But you get a 27, 28-year-old Tyler Black, athletically as good as he is, but then getting this up here, and, uh, you know, I think you got a superstar. The Briscoes as a tag team are unique. I, I love their promos, which, which everybody's, oh, the Briscoes can't talk. No, the Briscoes are the most legitimate, real, credible promo in professional wrestling today because they sound exact. They talk. They do their promo exactly like they talk. The, you can't tell the difference between on and off camera. And they're naturals. So I love that. And they're, they're unique, once again. So... And secondly, what was the second part of his question? Uh, was it stars in uh, it was underutilized in WWE? Underutilized in WWE. I don't want to call any names right now because that would that would stooge me that I'd never watch the fucking TV show because it gives me gas. But uh, all the guys in, that were in OVW developmental from 2002 until 2005. Just write all their names down. Very good. Our thoughts on why Shane McMahon left WWE is it because Vince doesn't listen to his opinions or the advice that Shane brings to the company. I have no theory and no opinion and no first-hand knowledge otherwise than I believe that Shane McMahon, more than anything else, and I think Shane's a great guy, and more than anything else, he always wanted to be his father. And he believed in the McMahon name and the McMahon family and the McMahon dynasty, and he wanted to sit in that chair one day, and when he found out... I believe that his little sister and the fucking wrestler that she married and how the, I would have bet my 
house and car and life 10 years ago that Vince McMahon's daughter would marry a wrestler about that you'd look up and see a donkey flying over, and it happened, uh, I think Shane finally realized, well, fuck it. it she's going to run the place. Fucking slope-headed caveman, is, as long as he keeps fucking pumping out the kids and everything, it's going to go that way. And so I'm going to go do my own shit. And I, and I hope he does. And I hope he is a giant success at it.